Welcome to the training video for perfect acquisition with HRT3 RCM. After introducing you to the components of the HRT3 with the RCM objective, we will highlight the possible applications. Afterwards, we will explain the preparations for the examination and demonstrate all examination options. The HRT3 has a total of three adjustment screws for operation. The upper screw moves the camera back and forth. The lower inner screw moves the camera up and down and the lower outer screw moves the camera right and left. The chin rest is adjusted with a screw on the chin rest guide. The focus can be adjusted on the lens. Please note that for acquisition of the HRT3 RCM, the refraction must always be set to plus 12 diopters. Here you can see the objective lens of the Rostock corner module. Inside there is a field lens with an image size of 400 micrometers. In the accessories you will find another field lens with an image size of 300 micrometers. To change the field lens, please use this tool which is included in the accessories. Use this tool to unscrew the field lens on the objective lens and screw on the other field lens. Before mounting the RCM objective lens onto the HRT housing, please make sure again that the refraction on the HRT is set to plus 12 diopters. Here you see the CCD camera that is attached to the RCM objective, which will later be used to check the distance between the RCM objective lens and the cornea. The CCD camera is aligned 90 degrees to the anterior surface of the RCM lens on the side of the eye to be examined. On the front of the CCD camera, there is a small wheel with which you can adjust the focus of the camera image. The TomoCap is a contact cap that is used together with the Heidelberg Retina Tomograph Rostock Cornea Module. The TomoCap serves as a protective cover for the microscope objective of the HRT RCM to avoid direct patient contact between the objective lens and the human eye and to enable an examination under sterile contact with the HRT RCM. Please use a new sterile TomoCap for each eye to be examined. To place the tomo cap on the objective of the RCM, remove it from the package and take care not to touch the front surface of the tomo cap. A highly viscous gel is serves as a gel bridge between the objective and the tomo cap. Apply an adequate amount of gel to the front surface of the objective and then firmly attach the tomo cap without touching the front surface of the tomo cap. Then after placing the tomo cap, check that there is enough gel and that there are no air bubbles in the center. Do not use ultrasonic gel or gel with low viscosity. The detection of the right or left eye is done automatically. Under the focus setting, you can check again whether the required plus 12 diopters is set. The image quality should be at least 65 for a good acquisition. An activated automatic brightness is recommended. Under focus position, assuming a correct reset to the corneal surface, the depth of the current acquisition can be read. An activated auto reset sets the focus position to zero with the first acquisition. The following scan types are available for acquisition. When section is selected, a single image is acquired and stored each time the acquisition button is pushed. If the sequence option is selected, a movie can be recorded with a variable number of up to 100 frames. The frame rate ranges between one and 30 frames per second. With the volume option, the scan starts at a specific depth after the acquisition button is pushed. A series of 40 images is acquired during which automatic depth adjustment takes place. The depth of the volume scan depends on the field lens used. With a 300 micrometer field lens, a maximum depth of 50 micrometer per scan is achieved. With a 400 micrometer field lens, the depth is 85 micrometers. The number displayed next to the scan type button corresponds to the number of the scans that have already been acquired and stored. Under the confocal cornea image, the start or pause button is located. To the right, you will find the settings for the CCD camera. Here it is recommended to leave the automatic settings activated and zoom factor 1. Now we will start a measurement. Under the examination section, we will click on new patient and then create a new patient entry, or we can search for an existing patient. I select HRT cornea as the examination order. The orders can be configured individually in the master data of the HiX2. 
Note that in the cornea module settings, the field lens is entered, which is attached to the objective lens. Now you can start the camera. After we have already placed the sterile tomo cap on the objective lens, the focal plane must now be set to the anterior surface of the tomo cap. To do this, turn the objective wheel clockwise until a wide area appears. This should be done with a focus position of between minus 150 micrometers and plus 150 micrometers corneal depth. When the image is brightest, press reset. The focal plane on the anterior surface of the tomo cap is now set to zero micrometers so that the depth of the examined structure can be read from this position while measuring corneal structures. To make obtaining the first image easier after docking to the cornea, I recommend setting the focus position value to plus 50 micrometers. This will ensure that you will see an intracorneal structure immediately when the tomo cap has contacted the cornea. Now we will do a patient examination. Before that, the chin and headrest are cleaned and disinfected as usual. We will have to apply one drop of local anesthetic to each eye to be examined. After that, I will also apply a little bit of gel into one of the conjunctival sacs. The eye gel that I've just applied to the conjunctival sac can be the same as the gel bridge between the objective lens and the tomo cap. Position the CCD camera so that the optical axis of the CCD camera is exactly perpendicular to the optical axis of the scanning laser camera. The camera must be located to the side of the eye to be examined. Now that we have adjusted the CCD camera, the patient can put the chin on the chin rest and we will move the scanning laser camera towards the patient until the cornea is 5 to 10 millimeters away from the cono cap. To assist the patient, you can place a fixation light so that it is in the optical axis of the patient and ask the patient to fixate it during the examination. Now move the laser scanning camera with the adjustment screws for right and left and up and down, such in a way that the red point of the laser beam can be seen exactly on the anterior pole of the cornea. Optimal centering makes the next steps much easier and is necessary for good images of the thin layers, such as the nerve plexus or the endothelium. Now move the camera towards the patient's eye until you see on the CCD camera image that you have contact with the cornea. Now you turn the RCM microscope lens counterclockwise until the superficial epithelium is visible. Press reset again. And now turn the objective wheel clockwise to reach the deeper corneal layers. We can see the different types of corneal cell layers with the corneal nerve fibers, the stroma, and the deeper you get, you reach at about 500 microns the endothelium. Here it is. Now I will show you different acquisition options. We have just went through the whole thickness of the cornea and now we will move back to the epithelium to have the focus position at zero micrometers to enable the different acquisition options. I start with the most commonly used mode that is the option section. As you pass each corneal structure, you can now generate an image by pressing the acquisition button on the HRT housing. Take as many pictures and as often as you like.
Now I will show you the second acquisition option, which is the sequence selection. You record a video when you press the acquisition button. While the video is running, you can adjust the focal plane as desired on the objective wheel and thus display different corneal structures within the video. The third recording option is volume. After pressing the acquisition button, the RCM independently records a film and adjusts the focal plane to the depth. When using the 400 microfield lens, a total depth of 85 micrometers is scanned. In the following illustration, I would like to show you tips for capturing good images. Always check the contact from the tomo cap to the eye during the examination. If there is no contact between the tomo cap and the eye, you will not be able to see any live images of the corneal layers. In this case, move the camera slightly forward again until sufficient contact has been established. If the pressure is too strong, wrinkles will appear. In this case, please move the HRT camera back slightly. Another tip is if thin layers such as subbasal nerve fibers, plexus or endothelium are not displaced as a whole image but only in stripes, then the contact surface of the cornea is not perpendicular to the laser beam. For horizontal stripes, it usually helps to adjust the height of the camera and for vertical stripes, to move the camera laterally. If in doubt, look directly at the patient's eye to select the correct direction of movement or move back a little and approach the cornea again. If you start seeing vertical lines, you move the lower outer screwer so that you can move the image from left to right or laterally. And if you see such lines, these are wrinkles, you move the camera slightly back. And in case you see horizontal lines, you have to use the inner lower screwer so that the camera moves up and down to get rid of those stripes. Another tip is if you find yourself with a focal plane outside the corneal thickness, please turn the objective wheel back to a focal plane that is inside the corneal thickness. In case you don't get an image at all, consider to apply some more gel to the eye of the patient to improve the image quality. After the measurement, close the acquisition window via exit or X Dispose the tomo cap and clean the front surface of the objective with a cotton swab moistened with distilled water. In addition, after removing the tomo cap, you can unscrew the tomo cap holder with this tool, which is included in the accessories. This can be cleaned with liquid detergent. In the image viewing interface, you can now see the acquisitions that have been made. Here you can directly recognize the tissue depth and the acquisition mode of the preview images that is section, volume and sequence. You can recognize a volume scan by the fact that the preview image looks like a book. A sequence scan is displayed with film strips. Double click and open an image. There you can see the focus position and navigate to other scans. For images of the corneal endothelium, you can also perform a cell count. For this, click on cell count, then select the first icon below and mark an area of an endothelial image in which you can clearly see the cell borders. Now click on the second icon and then click on each recognizable cell. In the case of intersected cells at the edge of the image, select every second cell. The corresponding amount of cells per square meters is shown on the right edge of the image. The third icon shows a disk. With this, you save the cell count. The last icon with the waste basket discards the current count. I hope now you got an idea of how to perform your images with the HRT 
3 RCM. I wish you much success using this device. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact trainings at heidelbergengineering.com.